Welcome back sa maikling kwentuhan with Doc Athena. Ngayong araw ko ay pag-uusapan natin ang sakit na rabies. Ano nga ba ang rabies? Rabies is a viral disease caused by Lysa virus under the family Rhabdoviridae. They cause acute encephalomyelitis, which is very fatal. Ano ba yung mga pwedeng maapektuhan ng rabies? Alam niyo naman po siguro na aso at pusa ang madalas na tinuturukan ng anti-rabies vaccine. So yes, they have the highest number of reported cases. Pero hindi ibig sabihin na sila lang ang pwedeng magkaroon po ng rabies infection. So ano pa yung iba? This is a mammalian disease. So yung mga mammals ang pwede pong maapektuhan. Ano po? Kasama po dyan, syempre ang ating farm animals tulad ng Ruminants, okay. Horses, pigs, yes, they could be infected with rabies too. Pero dok, sa farm animals, kasama po ba ang mga alaga namin na poultry o mga manok at iba't ibang ibon? Pero din po kaming fish pan. Maaari din po bang magkaroon ng rabies sa aking mga alagang isda? No, <laughs> no, because they are not mammals. The birds or poultry and fishes cannot be infected with rabies so far. <laughs> so far with the reports, okay? Because we don't know in the future what could be the possible diseases in the future. But as of now, these are the reports. Rabies has been reported worldwide. So ibig sabihin, sa buong mundo, present po ang sakit na ito. Although, of course, there had been moves and there had been a campaign for a rabies-free nation. And Philippines is very active with this. Although right now, we don't have vaccination against rabies in farm animals. Tabanggiti po, Doc, ang encephalomyelitis. Yes, kasi po ang target system ng sakit na ito ay ang ating nervous system. So ibig sabihin, most of the symptoms that we can observe are of nervous signs or related to nervous signs. So Doc, ano po yung mga maaari nating makita sa ating mga alagang ruminants kapag sila po ay tinamaan ng rabies? Iba-iba po kasi may different types of rabies. But in general, kapag ang ating alagang ruminants po ay tinamaan ng rabies, maaari po silang magkaroon ng sudden behavioral changes. Ibig sabihin, may mga pagbabago po sa mga pag-uugali o kilos ng ating mga alaga. Meron din po dyan lameness or nahihirapang maglakad, okay? O nahihirapang tumayo. Kung makikita mo, may iba sa kanyang gait o yung paglalakad niya, no? Mapapansin niyo po yan sa paggalaw ng kanyang mga paa. So, maliban sa pagbabago sa kilos at sa paggalaw ng kanyang mga paa, maaari din po nating maobserba na nahihirapang kumain o lumunok ang ating mga alaga. Dahil dyan, eh, syempre, no, eh, bababa yung kanilang feed intake. Okay? And next would be, there could be central nervous system abnormalities. Kasi nga po, nabanggit natin kanina na utak ang tinatamaan sa sakit na ito. So paano po ba maaaring magkaroon ng rabies ang aming mga alaga? Well, there are several ways. But of course, the most common way for an animal to be infected would be when an animal is bitten by a rabid animal. It could be a dog or any other wild animal or from a bat. Okay? Ayan. So maliban doon kapag may exposure sa saliva ng infected animal. For example, yung inahin na rabid, pwede niyang mahawaan yung kanyang anak kapag siya ay nagpapagatas. Or kung ang may rabies naman ay yung bata at nagbebe sa inahin, ay syempre maaaring mahawa ang kanyang ina dahil sa exposure nila sa laway o saliva. Or a saliva from an animal, dead or alive, through the mucous membranes in the eyes, nose, or mouth. No, bakit naman dead or alive? Because in one of our references, a frozen carcass can still be a source of infection. So, anong nangyayari kapag nakagat no? or uh, 
makapasok yung saliva na merong virus sa katawan ng isang hayop. So, ang kanyang incubation period ay depende dun sa site of contact o kung saan nakagat no, yung hayop. From there, the virus would replicate locally. Okay? And then, pag madami na sila, magta-travel po yung virus paakyat sa brain or papunta sa brain through antegrade axonal transport. And once nasa brain na siya, which is part of the central nervous system, magta-travel naman yan papunta sa salivary glands or sa nasal epithelium through axonal transport. Kapag sila ay nakarating na sa nasal epithelium or salivary gland, ay magkakaroon na po ng shedding. Ibig sabihin, pwede na silang magkalat ng lagim sa ibang hayop sa kanilang paligid. The incubation period could range from weeks to months. It depends on the bite location. Kung nakagat yan dun sa legs, ay mas matagal ang kanyang incubation period as compared dun sa nakagat dun sa nose. Ano naman sa nose, Dok? Eh kasi nga po ang ating mga alaga na livestock, ano po? Ay, they are curious animals. Eh baka kasi gagawin-ganon sila, di ba? Sa mga areas, hindi nila alam na meron palang rabid dog doon, okay? So, pwede na yung attack ng dog is through the head. So, kapag around the head lang yung bite location, mas maiksi po yung incubation period. It would entail or it would require a shorter period for the virus to reach the brain. Okay? So now let's proceed to physical exam and clinical signs. So ano nga po yung mga general clinical signs na maaari nating maobserba sa ating mga alaga kapag ito ay tinamaan ng rabies? Sila po ay nagkakaroon ng behavioral changes. Extremes yan. Okay? So meron tayong aggressive and meron din tayong dull or depression. Alright. Next is meron din po Unexplainable progressive paralysis. There's vocalization or changes in sounds. Maaari din pong magkaroon ng lameness or gait abnormality. At eto sa mga lalaki, there are reports in bulls of sexual activity abnormality. There are reports of persistent erections and penile prolapse. Other than that, There could be inappetence or yung lack of appetite. There could also be seizures and dysphagia. Pag dysphagia, nahihirapan po na mag-swallow or lumunok. So nabanggit ko po, there are two types of rabies. One is the furious type and the other is the paralytic type. Yung furious, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na exaggerated no? or very active, hyperactive. Yung isa naman, yung dull or depression, ito po yung paralytic form. Okay? But the most common clinical sign observed in cattle is the esophageal paralysis. Okay, ibig sabihin, kung nasa throat nila yung problema. And this is indistinguishable with esophageal obstruction. Kaya yung mga vets po or even the owners, kapag tingin, akala ninyo esophageal obstruction, kaya huhugutin ninyo, tutulungan ninyo, natanggalin no, yung kanilang yung obstruction doon. Abay, mag-ingat po tayo. Kasi baka mamaya, rated pala. No? So, always wear gloves and mask. Okay. So first, let's talk about the furious form. Ano ba yung mga makikita natin sa furious form? Well, there is exaggeration. No? And there is expression of anxiety. Also, there's a dilated pupil. Ibig sabihin, lumalaki yung pupil nila. Okay? Or Oh, para na open Okay? Kaya siya dilated pupil. Also, with that, sa kanilang furious form, ay pakikita mo na parang naging hyper yung alaga natin. Naninira sila ng stalls, no? They kick. Sometimes gusto nilang lumabas. Ayaw nilang makulong. So, and the animal becomes aggressive even with just a very simple stimuli. No? Lalo na yung mga auditory and tactile stimuli. So, ano sila? Naging OA. Also, with this furious type of rabies, pwede rin po tayo maka-observe ng convulsions, pruritus, pwede rin magkaroon ng pica at yung tenesmus or motility disorder. That's for the furious form. Now, let's move to the paralytic form. So, with the paralytic or dumb form, pwede pong magkaroon ng anorexia. So, walang ganang kumain. Depression. 
attack siya. Pwede rin. At ganyan din po ang shifting leg lameness at fever. There could also be paralysis of the masseter muscle. Ano ba yung master muscle? Well, this is the muscle which is responsible for mastication or chewing, yung pagnguya po. Okay? Maaari din po na magkaroon ng pharyngeal and laryngeal paralysis. Ito rin po ay tinatawag na throat spasm kasi yung larynx at yung pharynx, these are actually parts of the throat. And they are actually the passageway from the mouth to the internal organ. So yung larynx, ito po yung dadaanan ng hangin papunta sa trachea going to the lungs. Whereas yung pharynx, ito naman po yung dadaanan ng pagkain at tubig going to esophagus to reach the stomach. Okay? And because of this paralysis, nagkakaroon po ng profesalivation and inability to swallow. Ibig sabihin, nahihirapang lumunok. Bakit? Eh kasi nga po, nagkakaroon ng throat spasm or nagkakaroon ng paralysis yung larynx and pharynx. Ngayon, dahil nga doon dumadaan no, yung tubig at pagkain, natawag din minsan ang rabies as takot daw sa tubig. No? So, nagkaroon doon ng hydrophobia. It's not actually takot sila sa tubig. It's because pag merong tubig at iinom, no, kahit kunti lang yon pag dumaan sa kanilang throat dito sa lalamunan, eh, nagkakaroon nga ng throat spasm. Masakit yon sa kanila. Okay? It's not that takot sila sa tubig. No. Ah, yung pwede natin makita kapag sa dumb or paralytic form. Okay? Maaari rin po na merong flaccidity. The tongue, tail, and anus. So parang nanlalambot po no, yung dila nila. Kasi nga, there's paralysis. Okay? Ano pa? There would also be tenesmus. Pag tenesmus, uh, yun nga, nabanggit ko kanina, this is actually uh, motility disorder. no So parang feeling nila magbabawas sila. Pero wala namang lumalabas. So, stressful yun, no? even with humans naman, if you experience that, di ba? Okay, Doc, kapag ma-observe po ba namin yung mga signs from the furious form or the paralytic or dumb form, ibig sabihin may rabies na po ang aming alaga? Hindi po. So, kapag meron pong isang single clinical sign, maaari pong maglista ang inyong veterinaryo ng differential diagnosis. Ito po ang kanyang listahan na maaaring sakit ng inyong alaga before the vet could arrive to a final diagnosis. So ano po yung mga ibang sakit na maaaring paghinalaan kapag nakitaan po ng mga clinical signs of rabies ang aking alaga? Una po sa listahan ay behavioral aggression that is not related to any infectious disease. Maaari lang na bored, okay? Or baka kailangan baguhin sa routine ng animal. Dahil nga po nagkakaroon ng throat paralysis, maaari din po natin isama sa listahan ang oral or esophageal obstruction. There are also several neurological diseases that could be included in differential diagnosis, such as grass tetany, polioencephalomalacia, milk fever, Nervous ketosis, nervous coccygosis, anaplasmosis, or bacterial encephalitis. Maaari din pong isama sa differential diagnosis ang mga sakit na transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. Katulad ng scrapie, yung madgao o bovine spongiform encephalopathy, at ang chronic wasting. Minsan po akala natin rabies. Yun pala, neurotoxin ang may sala. Ano ba yung mga neurotoxins na yan? Usually yung carbamates or OPs na tinatawag or organophosphates. Matatagpuan to usually sa mga agri-chemicals. No? So be very careful with that as well. For ruminants with a differential diagnosis, we could also include several viral encephalitis diseases. Tulad ng bovine herpes virus encephalomyelitis, pseudorabies, malignant cataral fever, ovine or caprine lentiviral encephalitis. Ito po yung binanggit ko na SRLV sa ating discussion tungkol sa KE. Ito po yun, okay? So you could toggle there somewhere, lalay ko yung link dyan. 
So, tiniskas na atin dyan ang CAE na nagkakos din po ng encephalitis or problem with the brain or nervous signs. Pwede rin po ang West Nile virus encephalitis, Borna disease, paramyxoviral sporadic bovine encephalomyelitis at ovine encephalomyelitis o looping eel. E do, ang dami naman palang sakit. So, paano natin malalaman no, kung rabies nga po ang tumama sa ating alaga o yung mga iba't ibang sakit na sinabi mo? Okay. So, meron po tayo diagnostic procedures. Okay. So, dyan natin malalaman kung rabies nga ba o yung napakadaming ibang sakit na nabanggit ko ang problema ng ating alaga. Okay? Hindi po pwede dito ang hula-hula lang. Kailangan po natin ng teknolohiya at tamang paraan kung paano natin mapapatunayan na rabies nga po ang case ng inyong alaga sapagkat ito ay isang reportable disease na rarapat lamang na maging sigurado tayo na rabies nga. Dahil kung hindi, eh, maaaring iba rin po yung paraan o approach natin dun sa case ninyo. Okay? Dok, ano po ba ang kailangan natin na ibigay sa laboratorio? Ang kailangan natin dito ay ang CSF or cerebrospinal fluid. Nandyan po yung virus. So there are three diagnostic procedures. Ang gold standard po ay yung DFAT or direct fluorescent antibody test. Kailangan po natin dito ng fresh na cerebrospinal fluid. Preferably from the cerebellum or the brainstem. Aside from direct fluorescent antibody test, they also do mouse inoculation test and RT-PCR. So what are the pathologic findings? Wala pong gross lesions, okay? So what they usually see or what they usually find in the lab are the histopathologic lesions. On histology, they usually see the negri bodies and cytoplasmic inclusion bodies containing the viral antigen. There could also be diffuse encephalitis with perivascular coughing and neuronal necrosis. Okay, doc. It has been diagnosed and confirmed from the lab that my animal is suffering from rabies. Is there a treatment? Fortunately, there is no treatment of rabies in livestock, but here's the good news. It could be prevented. So ano po yung mga preventive measures natin? Number one is of course vaccination. Okay, so this is a preventable disease through vaccination. While it is common with our pets that they are being vaccinated against rabies, it is an uncommon practice with our livestock that they are being vaccinated against rabies. The thing is, in other country, it's already considered as required but it depends on the situation. One way of prevention is to make sure that your pasture or your ranch or your farm is not being infiltrated by wild animals, which could be a reservoir of rabies. Also, make sure that your farm is free from bats. We have registered anti-rabies vaccines here in the Philippines because this is not a core vaccine for our livestock. I would highly recommend that you coordinate with your vets, local vets, either your provincial vet or your municipal vet so that they could guide you well on how are you going to implement or how are you going to incorporate anti-rabies vaccination in your herd. So, Doc, anong gagawin natin? Eh, na-diagnose na nga po na rabies ang problema ng aking alaga. All right. So the CDC or Center for Disease Control has two recommendations. Okay. Una po kapag bakunado yung kinagat na hayop at pangalawa ay kung hindi bakunado ang alaga ninyo which is suspected for rabies ay meron pong up-to-date vaccine ay maaari po siyang bigyan ng booster agad-agad and observe the animal for 45 days. That is according to CDC. Yung isa naman, kapag hindi naman bakunado yung kinagat na livestock at suspected for rabies, eh, unfortunately, the recommendation is to euthanize. Okay? Hindi po natin ito bibigyan ng pagkakataon na magkarat ng lagim. Yamang hindi po treatable ang sakit na rabies sa livestock. Unfortunately, it is recommended to do 
euthanasia. So ayan po ang pwedeng mangyari sa ating alagang livestock if it has been confirmed that they are infected with rabies virus. Please take note also that this is a reportable disease. So once that you suspect that your animal is suffering from rabies or had been bitten by a rabid animal, it could be dog, or if there are some signs that you observe in your farm and you know that there are some bats visiting your livestock, please do report them immediately because this is a reportable disease and it is of public health importance. Kaya mang zoonotic disease po siya. So maaari pong kayo o yung vet ninyo o ang mga kapitbahay ninyo ay maging biktima rin ng rabies galing sa isang livestock na infected ng rabies. In order for us to properly handle the case, please do seek professional help. So yun lamang po ang ating maikling pentuhan tungkol sa rabies. Sana po ay meron kayo natutunan and I hope to see you again soon. So ayun po ang tungkol sa rabies. So just a wrap up, no? Rabies is a viral disease caused by Lysa virus under Rhabdoviridae family. At usually po, ang transmission is through saliva and the most common is through animal bite from a rabid animal. Pero ang point of entry po nito ay maaari din sa mga mucous membranes such as eyes, nose and mouth, and of course, open wounds. So it is highly advised that you always wear gloves and mask when you are trying to evaluate or help an animal that is suspected of rabies or any other disease for that matter. And there are several clinical signs with rabies, depende po sa form niya. So ano nga po yung dalawang form of rabies? Meron po tayong furious form and yung paralytic or dumb form. Aside from that, mahikitaan siya na throat spasm. Ito ba ay uh, maaari pang magamot? Sorry, wala pong treatment ang rabies. But the good news is it is a preventable disease through vaccination and of course making sure that your herd or your farm is free from roaming or invading wild animal that could be rabid or if there are bats in your area. So ayun po, this is a reportable disease. So in case you're suspecting it, please do get a professional help and let us save everybody from possible infection of rabies because this is also a zoonotic disease. Yun lamang po ang ating maikling kwentuhan tungkol sa rabies. Sana po ay meron kayo natutunan sa ating maikling kwentuhan with Doc Athena. Hanggang sa muli, God bless us all and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!